name of God. Another name, Zaum, is the highest name of God. It is composed of three letters, A, U, M. This one name comprises many other names of God, thus, briefly, A stands for Virat, Agni and Vishwa, etc. U stands for Herani Agaba, V, A, A, Y, U and Tajas, etc. M stands for Aishwara, Aditya and Prajna, etc. Vedas and other true Shastras. That whatever they treat of God, all these names stand for him. There are no gods. The multitude of names like Indra signify not different divine beings but different aspects of one. Absolute existence, object to asterisk, 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 why not take them to stand for other object? Do they not also mean earth, heaven, Devdas as Indra, and in the medical science drugs such as green ginger, author, Yes, they do. But they also mean gods, objector, or we believe that they only mean gods. Why do you not believe the same? Author, what proofs have you support of this assertion? Objector, they signify devatas asterisk because the devtas are manifest and also good. Author is not God also. Manifest. Is there anyone holier than, a superior to, him? Why do you not believe that these names signify God as well, when God is manifest and incomparable? How can there be anyone superior to him? There are many objections against your belief. Suppose, a man placed food before another and requested him to eat now. If that man were to reject that food, look for it elsewhere, he would not be considered wise. Because he rejects what he has and runs after what he has not. The same is true of your statement. Because you refuse to accept that the names like Virat signify God, who is real and whose existence is proved by every possible evidence, as well as the real tangible universe, etc. Whilst you readily believe that they mean gods, who neither substantiate your statement by authority nor by argument, his servant. Get me, signed Harvard, now that man in order to find out what his master wants, or to take time and place into consideration, because signed Harvard means salt as well as a horse. It it be meal time. He ought to bring salt, while, if it be time for going out, he should bring the horse, if, however, he brings the horse at meal time and salt when his master wants to go out. His master will get angry and will, most likely, say, Oh, you ignorant fellow, what was the object of your bringing the horse at meal time and salt when I was going out? You are ignorant of the fitness of things. You have ought to have taken time and place into consideration and done what suited the occasion. You have filed to do that. You are, therefore, senseless. Get away from me. It is clear, therefore, that a word ought to be taken to mean what fits in with the occasion, circumstances, and the subject under discussion.